What's up everybody, Stardog here. Welcome to another episode of Player Stock Report. But to start this episode out, I want to make an announcement of sorts. I want to focus on trying to get a little bit more subscribers, and if I can get 50, I'm going to bust a 2016 Sage Autograph Football Hobby Box. That would be amazing. You guys would absolutely love it. It's 12 packs a box, two autos per pack. Even the box states 25 guaranteed per box. But it's an amazing box. I love it. It's one of my favorite of all times just because of the content. And with this draft class, it would be an amazing box to bust. I remember busting one back when you know Michael Crabtree was a rookie and I got a 1 out of 25 auto. It was amazing. So to keep that into consideration, please subscribe if you haven't. If maybe if you know someone who might enjoy the video, please share it. But from there, we're going to go right to player stock, guys. And let's go right into my hot dozen, what I call the 12 hottest rookies right now, um, right after week four. Number one, I have Dak Prescott. And I know that's a little contradictory to my statements about Carson Wentz solidifying himself as the number one quarterback in this class. But in all brutal honesty, I do believe Carson Wentz is the better quarterback. But with all market value consideration and just, you know, money, Dak Prescott is the number one rookie right now. At number two, I do have Carson Wentz. And you can make the argument for Wentz at number one. But I do have two, Carson Wentz at two. And he has just outperformed all expectations. I did not think under a rookie head coach with rookie staff that he would be doing as well as he has. Especially coming out of a school like North Dakota State where I felt he might melt with under the NFL pressure. It just hasn't happened. He's a little great. He's a football player, so you can bet on a football player playing football, hands down. Number three, I have Ezekiel Elliott. He's been producing. Last, you know, last week he had 100 yards and a touchdown. I think the foot's on the accelerator a little bit here. I hope they don't run him to the ground because he's getting over 20 touches a game, but we'll see what happens. And, you know, Beckett's had him at number one over the past month or two themselves. Number four, I have Will Fuller. And I haven't been talking much about Will Fuller, but I feel in terms of production, he is the number one rookie wide receiver right now. He's been doing great out there with Houston. Him and Brock Osweiler have a great rapport. They connect very well. Him and Hopkins as well. It's awesome. You know, a punt return for a touchdown, I think, this past week. He just seems to be getting, you know, 70 yards or so a game in a touchdown. It's just great. And hopefully the Notre Dame product keeps it up. He's a good uh, a weapon out there in Houston. And number five, I have Sterling Shepard, another rookie wide receiver for the New York Giants. Now, Odell Beckham getting double teamed. It's looking, it's starting to frustrate him a little bit. But you got a guy like Sterling Shepard running beautiful routes and getting good rapport with Eli Manning. And he's producing, looking a little better each week. And that's why he's my number five. <clears throat> At number six, I have a guy who transferred from UAB to Indiana to become the starting running back for the Chicago Bears, Jordan Howard. Um, what a story, though. You know, UAB product, same school as Roddy White, shut down their football program. He had to go to Indiana in the footsteps of Tevin Coleman. And uh, here he is with the Chicago Bears, 23 carries for 111 yards. Yes, I might sound a little biased. I love it, though, when a rookie running back comes in and just, you know, kind of takes over. But he's only had this last week to show us anything, and, you know, Langford's a good back. I don't think they're just going to hand the reins over. He's definitely going to fight for its job, so we'll see what happens out there. At number seven, I have Cody Kessler. Now, I didn't even really mention him on my top, you know, hottest rookies previously, but, you know, he's a quarterback of circumstance. He's looked okay, though, the past couple weeks, especially for a rookie, and I think he's earned his, uh, earned his shot here. At number eight, I have Tajay Sharp. I am well aware the production hasn't really been there, but he's a rookie number one receiver. Being a number one receiver on an NFL team is very hard to do. Doing it as a rookie, tremendous value. So I have that, that's my argument. Number nine, I have Jacoby Brissett. He's sitting at nine now. He won't be there. He'll be off the list, I'm sure, in the future. Brady's coming back. But it sheds some light on, I think, what New England might want to do in the future after Tom Brady. Number 10, I have Paxton Lynch, and I'm a little touchy on this. I don't really know how to feel about it because Trevor Simeon has been playing so well. He's only a second-year player, and you know, but the Broncos traded up to draft Paxton, and it's a very, you know, very a confusing situation. But in terms of collecting, I think it, it's 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 kind of touchy. 
I wouldn't invest heavily in either right now. I mean, it kind of messes with their value, both of their values a little bit. I don't think this will be another Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick situation, you know, given you know, Alex Smith was playing so well for San Francisco and they got hurt and then Cap comes in and plays because people wanted the young quarterback to play. Took him to the Super Bowl and give him all the credit in the world, but I mean, 49ers fans are still hurting from that and, and, and it's just very unfortunate. But I think Trevor's good enough to come back and definitely beat Paxton out. I mean, hey, Denver hasn't even announced who's going to start this week. They won't do that until game day and probably an hour or two before kickoff. So we'll see what happens out there. But Paxton did play this past week. Didn't look too bad, so I had to put him up there. At number 11, I had Wendell Smallwood. Now, he didn't play this past week, but he did look good the week before. You know, Philly's on a bye week. They were on a bye week. They're coming off one, so we'll see what he does. Definitely keep an eye out for the WBU alum. Michael Thomas, I have at number 12. Uh, Ohio State product, finally getting a rapport with Drew Brees. Looking good. The targets are going up each week. Everything seems to be falling into place for him. And it I, looks like in the future he will be the number one receiver at some point. He, remind, he has that Corman, Corey Coleman type uh, possession receiver uh, 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 you know, ability. And it's looking great. I think, uh, I think it's only going to go up. I did leave golf off the list. And people would consider that heresy. heresy. But in my opinion, you got to play. And if you're not on the field, I can't put you on my hot list. There's no movement. His value is skyrocket. It's up there. He is worth more than most of the people I mentioned on my list this evening. But um, you know that's only because he hasn't played. And if he busts, you know, say goodbye. That's the market. But you know, I do think he's he'll pan out. And the Rams are doing great. They're three and one. They beat Seattle. They beat Arizona. All with Case Keenum. But it's their defense that's winning in the games, and they know it. Fisher knows it. He's a defensive kind of coach. And he's prepping golf. He's getting him ready for the best scenario, and I think collectors know that. And it's something to definitely take in consideration. If you, hey, a, a Jared Goff autograph rookie is an amazing pool. And it's probably a better pool than any other autograph rookie, uh, say for the uh, you know, five, top, my top five players on the list. But he hasn't played, and I can't put him up there. That's it. And I also had Corey Coleman in an honorable mention situation, but he is coming off an injury. But he has played this year, and he's looked good, so we'll see what happens. We did pull his rookie jersey out of our Panini Certified, so we'll definitely have to keep an eye out for him. Um, so I want to go right into Kevin White. And I've hyped up Kevin White all year, and unfortunately he got an IR, the injury bug. But again, I don't know when it did. It's like overnight, it seems like. I don't know. When, when did it? I, I don't know. But I got a message. He's hurt on IR. He didn't look like he, he'll be back at least this year. And uh, it's a shame because he is a talented receiver. His stock is dropping, though, and it's going to stay down. Um, but if you believe in the young man, and it will be a do-or-die season next year for him, but if you believe in him, consider it, I don't know, he's on sale right now. You can pick up his high-end stuff on sale right now. How about that? Uh, number, I, I think uh, another, another topic is Sammy Coates. Now, Martavius Bryant out there in Pittsburgh hadn't been playing. Sammy Coates steps in, and hey, he's got four straight games with a pass reception of uh, over 40 yards. That's a pretty decent stat line, and his production has gone up each week. I'm a little uncomfortable investing heavily, but I think you got to add him to your collection and you've got to watch for him. His stock, though, is up. And I have Jared McKinnon up as well. He really performed well in the, the, the system they had him in. The whole, you know, it looked like the old Oklahoma system the Vikings did, uh, were playing in last week with Sam Bradford at the helm. Sam Bradford looked real comfortable in it, McKinnon looked comfortable in it, and McKinnon produced in it. And I think with that and taking into consideration, why wouldn't that really translate over into future production? I think his stock is up right now. Definitely go after his rookies if you can, um, because he might be able to carry this all into next year. I want to talk about Terrence West too, because Terrence West provided the Ravens with the first touchdown by a running back all year. And Justin Forsett's, you know, stock has been a little bit up and down lately. Some people have been real hot and cold about him. 
Terrence West did perform half decently with Cleveland. He didn't do terrible. He did have some flashes. Um, you know, 23 carries and 113 yards and a touchdown can tell you a whole lot, but it's going to take another week for me to really jump on the bandwagon with him. And it's just a it's a, just a messy running back situation out there. When you got a journeyman who produces, it's really tough to evaluate that. And um, just stay steady. It's up, but it's steady. I wouldn't touch it. Right now, though, I'm loving Jacksonville. They got a big win this past week against the Colts. And I think that um, they really remind me of Mark Brunel, Jimmy Smith, and Keenan McCardell. I mean, Blake Bortles and Allen Robinson and Allen Herms really remind me of that old school playoff Jacksonville Jaguars offense. Pass happy, they get the ball around, but they're missing a piece. And that's the Fred Taylor. Where's the Fred Taylor? Well, that would be TJ Yeldon this year, right? Will he be the next Fred Taylor for that Jacksonville offense? I think he definitely can, but I don't think it's going to happen full force this year. I think it's going to take him, and it's the whole learning curve. He's a young player. People didn't really give him the shot, I think, off the bat like he was, uh, was hoping for. And it was just it, kind of a mess. But he has been producing. He really has been doing stuff the, this year. And I think he's only going to continue to learn and get better. And I think going into next year, if he can still remain the number one running back for him, you're looking at a very high, powerful offense. So just keep that in mind when you, when you see Jacksonville Jaguars games on. Um, <clears throat> another guy that I haven't talked about this year that I like is a, is a University of Florida. He's a Gator, Matt Jones, running back for the Washington Redskins. You know, 20-plus carries, 100-plus yards this past week and a touchdown. He's been doing well, you know, all the way since last year. And it's, it's been tough for me because I'm a Gator fan and I'm a Cowboy fan and I don't hate the Redskins. I don't really hate any NFL team, but I got to respect people who produce and I got to respect football players that, you know, really go against the odds and, and really make the best out of their situation. And Matt Jones did that and he's done it to a T and I think he's been great. And I think his stock is up and he's a guy to add, you know, definitely. Um, <clears throat> another guy that uh, is a kind of a question mark is Jadavian Clowney, former number one overall pick. Definitely a do or die year. I think his stock is a little up right now, but his production is 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 a boomer bust. It has it's been consistent thus far, but he just screams boomer bust to me. And so far, in in even this you know the steps leading up to the draft, it's just been it's it's been kind of iffy. I like him. He's so talented. As a football player, he's, he's a machine. I mean, people, they grueled over him coming out of high school, right? Like, it drooled, whatever. It's, it's crazy, though, that he hasn't been able to really kick up into it. And I know injuries have been a part of that. Um, but if he does, all those, you know, number one overall autograph cards and whatnot will definitely be taken off. So keep an eye out for him. This might be the last chance to get him at dirt cheap. And he's not dirt cheap. But he's cheaper now than he was when he came out. That's for darn sure. And another thing I want to talk about is the whole Josh Gordon situation. I was really high on Josh Gordon um, coming back. And I knew that kind of hurt in my Corey Coleman value and the whole Terrell Pryor production. Because Terrell Pryor's been doing so great the last two weeks. And his stock is up too. But Josh Gordon did a very mature thing this past week and admitted... Uh, uh, the need for further help and it really it, it stunned me at first because um, I think this is something like Manziel should have done you know Josh Gordon and Josh Gordon's been hit with a lot of suspensions and we know that this is pretty much going to be a do or die thing for him um, but this is probably the first instance where I've thought okay he's making the right choice here he's foregoing a lot of money he could have came back he didn't have to say a word to anybody about anything and could have just suited up and made money and continued with his, with his habits, with his drinking and stuff. He really could have just played it the way he's always played it, but he's learned. And that is so amazing, and I love to see that. And I think it was a, a, a great decision for him because it's only going to translate to future success. That's the only thing that's going to happen from this. His stock is low right now. He's probably not going to play this year. 
He's, you know, we'll see what happens next year. They haven't, you know, penalized him. There's no sanctions, nothing like that going on. Just a guy getting help, and it's awesome. And we'll see what happens there. But if you want to buy some high-end stuff, and I'm kind of looking at him because I like him. He's a beast of a player. So uh, maybe you can get some cheap, cheap high-end rookies, you know. Um, <clears throat> last but not least, I want to remind people that we haven't forgotten about the hottest draft class and that's this year's class. This is the 2016 class. That's the hottest class right now. We've been busting a lot of 2015 stuff. So yes, and I've been wanting to chase some of those rookies. And if you haven't, please check out the 2015 you know, prestige box busting because we got some great 2015 rookies to beef up the collections. I won't say any spoilers, but it was great. We had a lot of fun getting those 2015 rookies and going after some of their hits, but I'm so excited to announce that we got a couple 2016 boxes. It's going to be great getting into them because they're from uh, some sets that if we get that right player, we made our money back and we got a great, great uh, addition to our collection. I mean, let's face it, this is going to be amazing. I want to thank everybody who's been watching. I want to thank everybody who's uh, given me feedback and told me how much they liked it. It means the world to me. It really does. I enjoy this immensely, and um, I really appreciate it. Please uh, take the time to subscribe if you haven't, and uh, if you enjoy it or if you've seen you know, any, any cards in my past videos or if you haven't seen any past videos, please check them out. I'm, I'm sure you enjoy them. Um, but just let me know. We can trade. That's the whole thing. Let's get this network going of collectors, guys. Star Dog out, though. We'll see you Sunday with a, a bus in a box. I'll unveil it that day, though. Leave the suspense. We'll see what happens. Um, keep your fingers crossed, though, guys. Hopefully, we'll get some good picks, crack some good packs. You guys have a great rest of the week, and I'll see you here Sunday.